HD SLR Shooters coverage of Cinegear 2015. Brought to you by Akidio, Atomos, Black Magic Design, Carl Zeiss, ICANN, JVC, Sir, and Xylite. Hi, Clint with HDSLR Shooter here at Cinegear 2015 at the Digital Bolex booth, and I'm here with L. L, uh, what do you do with the Digital Bolex? I'm the creative director of the company, and I co-design the camera. The first time I held one was at NAB, uh, I think at the ICAM booth, and, uh, and I had been hearing about it for a long, long time and hearing all kinds of great things. You guys, this is a grassroots type of deal. You guys went through Kickstarter to start the company, right? Talk about that. Yeah. Um, basically, my business partner came up with this idea because he needed a specific camera for a specific type of project, and he realized that it didn't exist. So he started working on it and building a team, and I came on soon after that. And he came from a purely film background. I came from a purely digital background. So together, we created something that still had the experience of shooting film, but also suited the needs of the digital market. Talk about how you came up with the design then? Um, the design basically, it started with this kind of interesting shape and the idea was to create something that could be handheld ergonomically for long periods of time. Um, so there's always going to be a pistol grip on it. The pistol grip obviously comes off. The idea was you can have a pistol grip on there that allows it to be very ergonomic and you can handhold it for long periods of time. But we also have the standard mounts on the bottom that will allow you to put it on a tripod or do whatever you need to do, rigging it out in all sorts of different configurations. Configurations. Um, and the pistol grip actually records, which is very helpful uh, ergonomically, especially if you're doing things like concerts where you don't want to jitter your frame by hitting stop and start. Um, the concept of the um, general body was just to have it weighted in a way that wasn't going to make you shake because a DSLR, the way that you're holding it, is sort of like you would be holding a brick. You know, and it makes your arms have to be held up in a position that is very labor intensive and it, it pulls on your muscles and it's very difficult over time to be able to continue like being up like this for long periods of time, you start to shake. Whereas this guy, it's at a much more natural level, the way you would hold a film camera, something like this, and you can move with it a little bit more easily. Now we have a global shutter because of our CCD sensor, so it really is perfect for hand holding. And the idea was let's make the perfect hand holding camera with a body size that's easily usable for men and women and then also figure out what we need to do so that you can put it on a Fisher dolly or a Movi or rig it out in whatever way you need to. Now let's talk about the, the, the working to the camera, the sensor first. Uh, what's, uh, what's the sensor now? So it's a 2K sensor um, that was originally developed by Kodak a couple years ago. It is approximately the same size as a Super 16 millimeter camera, so you can use Super 16 and 16 lenses on this camera, and there's no crop factor for a Super 16 lens, which is great, because there's many people who are collectors of C-mount lenses and other older lenses that really haven't been able to use them because these lenses don't cover 35 or MFT or some of the other weird sensor sizes that are out there. So this was an ability for people to reuse this great vintage glass that A has become very inexpensive but also has a look that is much better and high quality than a lot of the cheaper plastic lenses that are out on the market today. We have internal recording, is that correct? Yep. And uh, so the camera itself comes in a variety of different sizes uh, as far as the hard drive? So it has an internal hard drive built in. We did that because we saw um, with a lot of other cameras where you can swap out the SSDs, you know, users want to use the least expensive media possible. And the problem is when you're writing 12-bit raw, the bit rate is very high. You're writing a huge amount of data. So you can't use bad media. Otherwise, it's going to lag or you're going to lose frames and bad things can happen. And we saw that with other cameras. So we said, okay, we're going to go to the highest grade drive possible. They're not available to go buy at Best Buy. Um, you have to have them specially ordered in bulk, um, and they're called enterprise class drives. So you can rewrite the drives that we have in here twice a day, every day for five years without seeing performance issues on the drive. So we did that so that people would be really reliant and comfortable with their footage, and we haven't had any issues of people with like weird skip frames or anything like that, which we take a lot of pride in. But we have uh, 256, 512, and now one terabyte versions of the camera. The one terabyte version can record over three hours in 2K and four hours in 1080. So it's really perfect. And a 512 is good for most people's full day shoot situations. We release the 1TB for more documentary and like more robust long term shooting and everyone seems pretty happy with it so far. Now the drive is not removable. Um, 
but we do have USB 3 in the back, and uh, that offloads pretty quickly when you're using USB computers and drives um, that have USB 3. We also have CF cards, um, two slots in the back, and you can offload to the cards manually or set it up to automatically dump. So if you have two CF cards in there, uh, once you hit record, it will record to the SSD, and when you hit stop, it will start automatically dumping to the cards. And depending on which cards you're using, the fastest speed we have is just about 1.75, which is pretty good. Um, that's a pretty good write speed. Now, uh, let me ask you, the in, in regards to uh, the file format, is it just raw or does it shoot ProRes? Or? It shoots only raw. Um, we just want to not screw around with the footage at all. We do no in-camera noise reduction, no sharpening, no kind of gain adjustment, nothing like that. So everything is like what you see is, is what you get because the idea is that any, any processing of an image that you can do in the camera is being done on a computer that's essentially that big. Why would you want to do it on there where it has to be quick and it has to be sloppy rather than going and doing it on your computer in a professional environment where you can have a lot more latitude to control what you're doing. Bigger processors, everything. Exactly, and and you know it's like I started off shooting you know AVC HD and H.264 cameras, and you know it's something as simple as shooting a silhouette and saying, gee, I really wish I could see a sliver of detail. Let me try to. Oh, I can't bring that up. It's an entire block of black because they've sharpened it and they've decided I don't need to have that information anymore. And it you know it's kind of a bummer. What a lot of people really like about our camera is that the the footage is so pliable because we give you everything everything. You know, we've had a couple of users who got in situations where like their light accidentally stopped working and they kind of had to shoot it in the dark on 400 ISO and then they would bump it up in post and they found like it was equivalent to shooting, you know, 1600 or 2000 ISO on another camera because you just have that much latitude to pull in posts. So talk a little bit about uh, the monitoring situation. Okay, so we have an onboard monitor. It's fairly low res, but it's enough for monitoring. And a lot of people do use it as is. Many people also get an EVF to put on the side. Um, but it doesn't flip up more than like 20 or 30 degrees, but a lot of people want to see at a 90 degree angle so they can shoot up here. And that's pretty typical. A lot of like the actual original Bolexes that shot on film, they had eyepieces so you would be holding it up here. So we decided to provide an option that would reflect the LCD. Um, up 90 degrees so that you can see it dead on holding it here and this also acts as a sunshade so if you're in a really bright situation this allows you to actually focus on the screen and not have to worry about squinting or reflections or anything like that. But you do have HDMI out it looks like yeah? We do and uh, HDMI out uh, it's a pretty clean image uh, we don't encourage recording only because I think most HDMI out is 8-bit, 10-bit. It's not anywhere near the 12-bit that we have. So we're working with Convergent Design to try and get the 7Q to work with it um, and figure what we can do to increase the quality of the signal. Um, but we do go out to pretty much any peripheral that has HDMI. So we've set it up with projectors. We use monitors from ICANN, Zacuto, Cineroid, anything that people are using. Now power, talk about power. So we have an internal battery. It runs three to four hours depending on how much of that time you're actually shooting. If you're recording the entire time, it's a three hour battery. If you're idling, it runs about four hours. And uh, we have a 12 volt in as well so that you can um, attach something like a Switronics power base that will give you another six to eight hours. And what we commonly see is people that are putting the Switronics power base directly underneath the camera. And then maybe they'll put it on a shoulder rig and they have this nice quick release plate on it so you can just swap out batteries if you need to swap out batteries but very rarely do we see people ever actually running out of battery on set. Uh, now uh, it comes in two flavors like film black and white and uh, color. Uh, talk about your decision process in that. We had a lot of interest in uh, our customers coming to us and saying, could I get a custom monochrome version made? And so we started doing a couple of them custom for customers and then realized, you know what, we should just make it available. And it's been one of our more popular products. We've sold many, many units of them because it's, you know, there aren't a ton of monochrome cameras on the market right now and you do get significant benefits. So if you're somebody who is shooting monochrome, monochrome come frequently, it's something that is totally worth getting and makes a lot of sense because you get 
sort of half a stop more of dynamic range because you're losing the Bayer pattern. You don't have to demosaic, and that gives you also like more brightness. So the native um, ASA of the monochrome camera is 400 rather than 200, and the sharpness is also a little bit stronger, but still no more A, which is something that we pride ourselves um, with on this camera. Now, uh, the camera has been shipping now for how long? About 18 months. And what is the price point on the, on both models? Or, or on, as, as far as the, the monochrome and the color, is there, is there a difference? There's a $400 difference between the monochrome and the color that just accounts for the extra labor, basically, that goes into it. And the any change in sensor price, because, anyway. But... Um, there are different options that the camera comes in. You know, the, the price is determined by first, what size hard drive you're getting, second, whether you're going monochrome or color, and third, if you are choosing a C mount, a PL mount, or an EF mount. So we have uh, recently just released our, our MFT mount, and that is becoming very, very popular lately, and we're about to become resellers of the Vedra lenses as well, and uh, that's a package that a lot of people have been very, very excited about. You are, are selling direct or through dealers or both? Both. Um, you can buy from us on our website. Sort of the benefit of buying through us is it's easier to customize your order, and we have you know a points and rewards system that if you buy stuff through us, you get points that can go towards your next purchase but we also sell through B&H we're about to start uh, selling through Sammy's as well and we have um, about a dozen international resellers that you can buy from in Europe and Asia what's the uh, what's the warranty on it it's a it's a one-year standard warranty but you're able to buy um, two additional years as an extension so long as you do it before your first year is up excellent Ella people want to find out more about digital bolex what do they do Go to digitalbolex.com. We have videos. We have an, a really amazing user community that is very aggressively helpful. And uh, every everyone who shoots on this camera, it's kind of like a family. And uh, the community spirit that we have is amazing and very welcoming of new people. And I encourage everybody to check it out. Excellent. Thanks so much, Al. Yeah, thanks. HDSLR Shooters coverage of Gear 2015. Brought to you by Akidio, Adamas, Blackmagic Design, Carl Zeiss, ICANN, JVC, Sir, and Zylite.